Should you choose the bar girl as your girlfriend and even wife in the Philippines? I've never been with a bar girl. And in my opinion, no, you can do what you want, I suppose. You're an adult, but there are far better choices, far better Filipinas, in my opinion, than a bar girl. I mean a bar girl, she goes with men for money. Can a bar girl change? Perhaps. I wouldn't bank on it though. And like I said, I've never been with a bar girl in the Philippines. So what would I know? Hmm. So I cast my mind back. This is a true story, by the way. 1999. 1999. In the UK. I meet a girl. Not a Filipina. She was British, but so she said she was half Pakistani, half Italian. And she looked like Cher, Sonny and Cher, Cher. The same kind of hair, the same kind of look. And she was lovely. We, when we first met, we used to talk on the phone. She had a mobile phone. She was one of the early people to have an early phone back, uh, an, uh, a mobile phone back then. I just had a landline. But we used to talk for hours and we seemed to have loads in common. And we got on really well. She was from Bristol, originally from Manchester. That's up north of England. And I just like everything about her. And we became an item. Now, she said she was a saleswoman on the phones um, selling computer software. Now, 1999, computers, PCs were quite new, so I wasn't totally clear what software meant. But she was pretty good at it, she told me. She made a lot of money. That's fine, great, good for her. I came to Bristol to meet her then boss, female boss. I met her, we went to a bar to drink. I met the, the boss and the boss's husband. The boss looked a bit strange. She wasn't quite wearing a bikini, but she was a bit strange for a boss anyway. Cut a long story short, she comes to live with me. She comes back to London soon after and lives with me in my apartment. Everything's fine for a couple of weeks. Funny thing was, when I used to go to work, I used to phone her on the landline. During the day, it's always engaged, always engaged. Why is it always engaged, you know? Maybe she was phoning back home, I don't know always engaged could never get through anyway after two three weeks um, we went to the family planning clinic and bear in mind this girl she used to swear she was cool she didn't mind if you if you cursed you know she wasn't one of those prudes she cursed herself and could take a good joke so uh, she said something when she went to, uh, to get the family planning scene to. She said something like um, the woman that she saw in there said that she had reminded her of someone she once knew. And I don't know why I said it. As a joke, it just came into my head. I said to my girlfriend, what would you have done if she said you, uh, you reminded her of a prostitute? I was trying to be funny. There was no reason I said that. She went ballistic. This is a woman that swore like a, that cursed like a trooper. She went ballistic. 
wouldn't walk with me on the way home. Oh, I'm sorry, before, uh, about a week before that happened, we had the local newspaper and she was looking for jobs. Again, I was trying to be silly and I made a joke. There used to be lots of adverts for masseurs, you know, those masseurs that, and escorts. And I, for a joke, said, well, if you can't find a job, you could always find a job doing that. Just a silly little joke. She didn't even look at the ads I was showing. It was a joke. And she knew it was a joke. Anyway, so after the family planning, after I said what I said, she wouldn't walk with me. She was in a huff. You could even call it a tampo, but you know. Anyway, we get back. She tells me, I'm going back to Bristol. I'm not staying here anymore. I thought that was a bit extreme. I also forgot to mention, she did eventually find a job. Again, she said it was selling, I don't know if it was software on the telephone, computer software, but it was selling something and she was doing well. She got paid in cash, commission. She was bringing home, this is 1999. She was bringing home about $500 in cash per night, maybe $400 in cash per night. She's doing well. I used to smoke cigarettes back then. She said she had another female boss. She said her boss had, had bought me 40, two packets, you know, a packet has 20 cigarettes in, two packets of my favorite cigarettes. I thought that's good, that's very kind. I don't even know your boss. I've never even met her. So this went on for a couple of weeks and I do remember when she used to get home about seven in the evening, I'd cooked dinner. It was summer, so it was hot. First thing she said was, I need to have a shower before I eat. I need to have a shower before I eat. Again, thought nothing of it. Anyway, she comes back. I'm going back to, to um, Bristol. I'm not gonna put up with this, blah, 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 blah. I thought, very strange. So I said, okay, if that's how you feel. I had about five or six hundred dollars that she'd brought from her job. I said, listen, you take your money. I don't want your money. If you want to leave me, you, you, it's your money. You take your money. We're no longer an item. No, you can, no, you take your money. Took the money. She got a mini cab. She then got a train back to where she came from, which is about a five hour journey four hour journey, no, maybe a three hour journey by train. It's in the west of uh, the UK, near Cornwall, or not far from. And that was that. I didn't know what had happened and why it had happened. It was weird, we got on so well. She was so broad-minded, so open-minded. What did I say? It was a joke. I told her it was a joke. Why did she react in that manner? Anyway, a week later, I get my phone bill. And back then, in 1999, they'd only just start itemising the bills. So you could see where you'd who you'd phoned, how long you'd been on the phone for, etc. Before that, you just got a bill and that was it. <clears throat> So I checked the bill, how much do I owe? Mm, okay. And I see all these um, phone calls. Remember I said when I was at work, I couldn't get through. The phone was always being used. So I'm looking at the, the numbers. Don't know the numbers, of course. And obviously she'd been on the phone. 20 seconds here, 50 seconds there, two minutes here, a minute there three minutes you know nothing long and don't forget she had her mobile phone her cell phone one of the early people in the UK to have a cell phone not even I had one and suddenly I'm thinking no I'm looking at all these numbers three minutes one minute two minutes 20 seconds 50 seconds no I'm thinking my mind suddenly goes back to the newspaper and those adverts for 
escorts and, mass and massage parlour girls needed. So I, lucky I still had the paper. And I look at the numbers and there were loads of ads, loads of massage parlours, loads of escort companies. And I check the numbers, I cross-reference the numbers on my phone bill with the numbers in the newspaper and they all matched. They all matched. I thought, fuck. That's why she was bringing in so much money. That's why when I mentioned what would you have done if she just said you reminded her of a prostitute, that's why she went mad. She was completely lying to me about everything in her past and what she'd been doing and the job she had. That's why she overreacted and went. I thought, Jesus, my first reaction back then was, Christ, say I've got AIDS, say I've got HIV. So the next day I went for a private uh, HIV test in central London. Mercifully, I did not have any such thing. A few days after that, she phones me up. Are you okay? Is everything okay with you? I said, okay with me, I'm gonna ask you a question. I checked those, the phone numbers on my itemized bill with numbers in the newspaper of escort parlors and uh, massage parlors and escort companies. Is that what you were doing? There was a silence for a few seconds and then yes. I said, is that what you were doing in Bristol? Was that your job? Did you ever really sell software, computer software? No. So you were a prostitute? Yeah. She starts crying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry as well. Why did you not tell me? You put my life at risk. Why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, oh, well, you know, I went for a test. I'm fine. It is what it is. I wish you well for the future. I'm sorry. Any, anyway, I wish you well, blah, 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 blah. I put the phone down. A couple of days later, she phones back up. Oh, sorry. Ugh. A couple of days later, one of her, I've, I never met her friends. One of her friends phones up. Zara, that was her name. Zara has got your, is pregnant with your child. And then I hear laughter in the background. I said, what? Pregnant with my child, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. Can I speak to her? No, she's too upset, blah, blah, blah. And then a day after that, Zara got into a fight. She lost your child, blah, 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 blah. Again, I hear laughing in the background. I, I put the phone down. They must have called me on a mobile phone and they must have forgotten to turn their mobile phone off because after I put my landline phone down, I thought, let me just phone my mother and tell her what's happening. As I pick the phone up, I can hear their mobile phone live still and they're talking about me. Oh, he really loved you. Ugh, makes me feel sick. <laughs> and all this laughter. To me, it sounded like they were on drugs. Again, a few days later, Zara, the one who looks like Cher, my ex, phones me up. Oh, I'm really sorry. I do love you. You know, blah, blah. I said, you were laughing at me. You hadn't turned your phone off. No, that was my sister. It wasn't me. I said, look, just can you stop phoning me? Anyway, so that's what happened. She wasn't exactly a bar girl from the Philippines, but she was sorta, and she was no good, is my point. Why go with her and ruin your bloody life? Find at least a half decent girl who's gonna ruin your life. At least you've got a fighting chance. <clears throat> that's not to say there aren't some good bar girls that will change. I doubt it, very, very few. They will, they're the scammers. They're the ones that will break your heart. You want a disease? You want an STD? Go with a bar girl. Don't even go there. There are so many Filipinas here who aren't bar girls. You don't need to. You don't need to go there. So my advice is don't even think of having a bar girl as a wife, as a girlfriend or anything.
I never had experience of a bar girl, but boy, did I have experience of someone very, very similar, and it wasn't nice. That's all.